goes as Locke finds Judy. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great. Because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 36. That one goes for 24 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Lock going to get this into the hands of Gordon. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles where he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. That time he was looking for Jerry Judy, and it's third down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Throwing his lock on third down. And able to find Green. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. A.J. Green, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos get a bit closer. And that is the definition of yards after catch. They go short on the pass, and the receiver does the rest. Seems so harmless, doesn't it? To throw it underneath, a short pass like that. But boy, it gets dangerous in the hands of the right receiver as he makes a move and takes it the distance. Extra point from McManus is good. And that will come. The lead down to 15. Bring After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Time for Tyler Boyd and the rest of the offense to take over now. And his two touchdowns, a big reason they're winning right now. So meaningful when you score and it's got your team out there in front. The Bengals drive about to get going. They are clicking on all cylinders. They seem to be just scoring at will right now, and that's why they've opened up this big lead. Now we always talk about getting into the zone, and all athletes are seeking that, aren't they? Where everything is working for them, every move they make works, it clicks, and they are on point right now. Yeah, they are in that zone that you're talking about. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. Complete. They'll get a couple yards on that one, and they're going to have a third down. And it's third down. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And Tate's got it. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about but it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. 
It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. So it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Three-yard gain on the play. Brings up third down. On third down, Burrow. That's complete to John Ross. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Burrow going to keep it on the sneak. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This time, Burrow will look to throw. The 20! Going down the middle, and it's complete. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. On first down now, run with McKinnon. And that's a touchdown, but hold on. There is a flag down on the field. We'll have to see what this is about. Holding offense. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. Got to go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. He's going to have the hook up to Ross. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Escaping the pressure right. This will be caught just inside the 10. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. Third and one, Burrow. Flushed out right. He and he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Touchdown, Joe Burrow. In the final seconds of the first half, and the Bengals add on to their lead. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. And the lead opens up now to 22 points. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was Joe Burrow who took it himself for the touchdown run. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. 
but we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in a minute, but first, let's take a spin around the NFL and see what's going on here in week number 10. We'll begin our tour up at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, where it was the Browns who were winners in that one at home. 24-15 was your final score. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And things didn't go so well as it was the visiting Raiders who come in and grab the victory. 24-3 was the final. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore and check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers. The final, 29-14. to 14. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. Brandon McManus. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. Taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. First and 10 at their own 22-yard line. So here are the Bengals set to take over. Last week, good result. They were able to beat the Detroit Lions, and now they are on the good side of the scoreboard right now as well. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 22. He'll set up the throw from the gun. Points the target, and he has it over the middle. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. And he's over 100 yards now after that last catch. Already, of course, leading the NFL in receiving yardage. So he's done nothing at all to hurt his cause to stay in that spot. But I've been so impressed with how he's gotten it done. Body control, route running. How about the way he competes for the football at the end of the play? One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Screen play, McKinnon. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. Well, pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Goal at the 7-yard line. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And the Broncos are going to have a first and goal as some good running there gets them down to about the two-yard line, knocking on the door. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. They'll try and punch it in. Gordon. And this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. 
but I often think that second down is the time you go play action, throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And Gordon's going to be stopped short. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that will bring up an interesting decision here.